Mario Balotelli. Some like him, some hate him. Some say he was overrated. Others say that he wasted his potential. Whatever people might think or say, there's no denying that the Italian showed the world his extraordinary potential as a professional football player and that he had the talent to become one of the greatest of all time had he just not been such a troublemaker. Speed, power, size, technical abilities, goals. Mario had it all, but he just couldn't overcome one final obstacle, his own mindset. Had he taken the games more seriously, had he put in more time, work and effort into his career, he could have been so much more than the player he is today. He could have ended his career as one of the greatest strikers of all time and gone down in the history books of football. But what exactly went wrong in Super Mario's career and how did it come to its downfall? Mario Balotelli Parva, born on August 12, 1990 in Palermo, Italy, is a professional football player. He was born with a life-threatening health problem which his parents had difficulties to deal with and cure due to the big medical bills and money being an issue for the family. At the young age of three, Mario Barua was put into foster care and soon after he would get adopted by the wealthy Balotelli family. Despite his health issues, Mario's passion and favorite hobby was football and at a young age already he excelled at it. By the age of 15, the young prodigy was promoted to the first team of FC Lumezani. And soon after, his favorite hobby became his job, with his health getting better the older he got. Currently, he is playing as a striker in the Turkish First League for Adana Demirspor. In his youth and early professional years, he was considered as one of the biggest talents in the world of football. From the age of 15, Mario had proven his talent and potential while playing in the Serie C for FC Lumezzani in Italy. Because of an age restriction in Serie C, where players needed to be at least 16 years old to take part in the competition. The club had to get an exceptional approval for Mario, setting a record for the youngest player to ever play in the league, which he still holds to this day. In 2010, he also won the Golden Boy Award for being the best player under the age of 21 and one of the young prospects in the football world. In his three and a half seasons with Inter, Mario shocked the football world with the insane potential that he showed on the pitch, scoring many important goals in big matches, at the age of 17. His performances combined with the hype around him led to the opposing teams hating on the young prospect because he kept showing up and winning games in clutch moments. Unfortunately, the hatred towards him escalated quickly and Italian fans moved from hating an opposing football player to them racially abusing Mario for the color of his skin. At that time, Italy was facing big racism problems in their league, with the Italian Football Association not doing much to stop it. In his first one and a half professional seasons for the club, Mario was coached by Italian manager Roberto Mancini, with whom he immediately bonded and had a father-son-like relationship. Under Mancini, Balotelli would get his first appearances and goals for the club, while improving his abilities on the pitch with every minute that he got, scoring impressive and important goals against teams like Juventus or Roma, in his first season already. In 2008, Inter Milan fired Roberto Mancini due to internal issues between the coach, several players and other people at the club. Inter then moved on to appoint the special one, Jose Mourinho, as a head coach, under which Balotelli proved to be quite a difficult player to deal with, and the Portuguese coach not having any of it. He went on to ban Balotelli from playing for half a month due to his lack of interest and bad work ethic during training sessions, saying that a younger player like him couldn't possibly be training less than the older and more experienced players like Figo or Zanetti. In his last season at the club, Mario had started to stand out more and more often, making headlines on and off the pitch while being criticized by many people, including his teammates. One of his final and most controversial moments happened when he went on live TV while wearing an AC Milan jersey with his name on the back. But Mourinho, despite that action, still believed in his abilities and gave the striker another chance to play for the club. However, that didn't last long. Soon after, Balotelli would take off and throw his shirt to the ground after a match against Barcelona, with the fans trying to attack him 
due to his lack of respect for the club. After this, there was nothing Mourinho or anyone at the club could have done to keep him in Inter, leading to Balotelli's first professional transfer to a new club. During his time spent in Inter Milan, Mario had 66 appearances for the club, scoring 19 goals and assisting another 6. He also collected 19 yellow cards and got his first red card as a professional footballer in a Champions League match against Rubin Kazan while playing under Jose Mourinho, who has had a very challenging yet funny and supportive relationship with the young Italian striker. Yeah, Mario. Mario was, was, was good fun. I could, I, could write, I could write a book of 200 pages of uh, my two years in interview with, with Mario, but the book would be not a drama. The book would be a comedy. A comedy. I remember one in uh, in Kazan. We went to Kazan in the Champions League, and um, in that match, I had um, all my strikers uh, uh, injured. No Milito, uh, no Eto. I was really in trouble, and Mario was the only one. Mario gets uh, a yellow card in the in minute 42, 43. So when I go to the dressing room at halftime. I um, I spent I would say 14 minutes of the 15 I was spending 14 minutes speaking only for Mario Mario I cannot change you I cannot make a change I don't have a striker on the bench don't touch anybody play only with the ball when we lose the ball no reaction if somebody provocates you no reaction if the referee makes a mistake no reaction Mario please Minute 46. No way. Uh, Red card. No way. (laughs) I told him to be at 2 o'clock in my office for a meeting. And um, he was not there. And when I called him, he went to the Formula 1 qualification races on a Saturday for the race on, on on the Sunday. And I told him, Mario, I told him, you know, you have to come to my office at... uh, at two o'clock, and uh, he was saying, ah, "Meetings in your office I can have every day, but to see the Formula One, the Formula, the Formula One is only once a year in, uh, in in Italy. So this is a funny, a funny situation. Obviously, in this moment, in the moment, it's difficult to uh, to accept because we are speaking about uh, top professional uh, football, but a kid of 18, 19 to have one of these naive." Uh, reactions. A couple of days later, I have to, I have to laugh, and, and especially to remember with, uh, in a sweet way. Despite being a troublemaker, Balotelli's performances on the pitch proved the world that he had the talent necessary for becoming one of the greatest strikers of all time. In the 2010-2011 season, he was reunited with his former coach from Inter Milan, Roberto Mancini, who had wanted to acquire the young Italian's skills and abilities for his Manchester City side. Manchester City paid a fee of 29.5 million euros for the striker's services and hoped that he would mature and perfect his skills and abilities under the guidance and coaching of Roberto Mancini, who had a very special and caring relationship with Mario, often defending him and giving him another chance when he'd have a poor performance on the pitch or make another bad headline in the media. Mancini really cared for Balotelli and was, undoubtedly, the coach that got the most out of him and his potential. I love Mario, like a guy, uh, also like a player, but uh, I think that uh, it's important for him to start to, to think his job if he wants to play well, because he has everything to play well, but he can continue to play like today. Uh, we, want, we wanted more from him, because... Uh, he has everything, uh, he has a t- top quality. Uh. You've given him chance upon chance upon chance yeah, that everyone else has said no. no. Do you continue giving him chances? Uh, sure, I am his manager, like uh, he's, uh, like the other players. If he deserves to have other chance, I give him uh, other chance. Upon his arrival at the club, there was a lot of hype around the promising striker. Manchester City was still aiming and trying to win the prestigious Premier League trophy. They were still hoping to finally overcome City rivals and Premier League giants 
Manchester United and Mario Balotelli was meant to help them finally achieve that goal. But Balotelli's start in the Premier League was anything but ideal, despite scoring the winning goal in his debut match. On 19th August 2010, Balotelli came on as a substitute to score against Romanian side Politehnica Timisoara in a 1-0 away win in the UEFA Europa League, but during the match injured the lateral meniscus in his right knee. Due to him suffering a bad knee injury and needing surgery, Mario had to wait for another two months to finally get some playing time and prove the world that Manchester City and Roberto Mancini made the right move by acquiring his skills as a striker. After his return from the injury, he immediately made an impact on the pitch, scoring a brace against West Brom and a hat-trick against Aston Villa. He then found himself struggling to adjusting to the strongest league in the world. For the rest of the season, Mario only scored five more goals, but he kept making the headlines each month with another Balotelli story. From struggling to putting on a training shirt, to him mocking LA Galaxy in a training match by not taking them as opponents seriously and failing an attempt at trick shot, Mario has done it all. Then, out of nowhere, it seemed like someone pulled a switch in Mario, and once the official match started again, he hit top form. For the next three months, Mario held on to his goal-scoring streak, where he scored a goal every 70 minutes, despite almost never playing the full 90 minutes for the club. In October of that season, it seemed like Balotelli finally figured out a way to keep himself under control and do what he does best, score goals on the pitch. This is when he had his iconic Why Always Me celebration against rivals Manchester United, where he scored two goals in a 6-1 victory, inflicting United's worst home defeat since February 1955. Unfortunately, Balotelli would soon go back to his old habits, getting a red card after a horrible tackle against Arsenal's Sanya. But that wouldn't stop him from helping Manchester City lift the Premier League trophy again after almost 45 years since winning it the last time, with his iconic assist to Aguero in the dying minutes of City's last game of the season. What's remarkable to mention is that Balotelli was the third highest goalscorer in that season, right behind Jaco and Aguero, who both had a lot more of playing time than he did, making him also the most efficient striker of the trio. I think, I think that this proves that we are the best, and that's why we won. We, we just, we just like, um, we didn't play very well, like just few games, but the rest of the season we played very good, so we deserve to win. Personally, I think too many people talk, too many people speak about me bad, and now they have just to shut up, that's it. Man City is a great club, it's a great team, great teammates. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see my future far from here, so I think I'm going to be here. And uh, we, I told you, we, we play all the season fantastic, and we deserve to win, and it's important for us, for our confidence for next year, and for all the people that, you know, all the people that don't like us, that just to shut up and watch us. That's it. But Balotelli kept giving Mancini more headaches than he scored goals, making it hard for the Italian coach to defend and justify the Italians' actions all the time. Mario ended up having some bust-ups with Mancini, some teammates, and collected his fair number of red cards while playing for the citizens. During his two and a half seasons at Manchester City, Balotelli played 80 games for the citizens, scoring 30 goals and assisting another four. He also continued his troublemaker attitude, seeing 27 yellow cards and four red ones during his spell at the club. Well, Roberto, we have to start with the incident yesterday involving yourself. And I Mario thought that you want to know about the game. <laughs> no, I, no, no, no. Uh, wasn't happen uh, a bad things like uh, on the newspaper. Uh, and I think that the photo are lost that what happened because uh, we were playing a game and Mario kicked the uh, his teammates and uh, I wanted I said to him uh, go inside leave the, the pitch I said no and I take his uh, shirt I push him out of the, the pitch this is it what really happened nothing special no fight or this is not true 
Have you spoken to Mario about it since since then? No, no, after, no, after, no, no, no. Will you be taking any action against him? No, 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 man. This don't change nothing uh, on uh, my on my thought. Uh, this is is uh, are things that can happen. Uh, usually happen uh, between uh, two players, but there was uh, was different because uh, I wanted that he leave the pitch after what he, he did against another player because uh, he can do this because usually he do this uh, during the game in official game. Uh, this is. Uh, for us, is uh, is not good, but the situation is this, not uh, not not other things that we f I fight with Mari. This not uh, not happen. I'm sure. Balotelli arguably had one of his peak performances during the Euros 2012, held in Poland and Ukraine. During the semi-finals against Germany. He felt unlocked on the pitch, helping Italy to the Euro finals against Spain that year, which they unfortunately lost by 4 0. Mario scored three goals in the six games played during the competition. His start at the Euros was far from great, with him failing to make a real impact for the team. The fans and critics were demanding him to get benched completely, but Italy kept progressing, and the coach Cesare Prandelli kept believing in Mario's abilities to show up and be the difference maker in a big game. When Italy faced off against Germany, the trust was finally paid off by Balotelli's amazing performance, scoring two great goals and knocking out one of the title favourites of the tournament that year. Unfortunately, in the final of the competition, Italy was facing off against one of the strongest national teams of this generation and lost with an embarrassing 4-0 result to a dominant Spanish side. In 2014, he joined the national team again for the World Cup, but it turned out to be a big failure for Italy, who were knocked out in the group stage already. After that tournament, Antonio Conte took over the role of head coach for the national team and didn't call Mario back up for the squad anymore. After closing the chapter to his, at the beginning, very promising Manchester City career, by repeatedly causing troubles on and off the pitch, Mario moved to his dream club in Italy, AC Milan, for a sum of 20 million euros, which at the time was still a lot of money for a player of Mario's talent, and a sign of Milan expecting big performances from the striker. In the last three days, uh, Milan started to talk uh, with the club and they did the offer. And uh, we thought that it was, uh, was good for for everyone, probably, because Mario, for Mario, could be a big chance to come back in Italy and to return to play in a, in a top club like Milan. And uh, we hope that it will be important for him and for the club that uh, can get back uh, some money. This, no, we are not happy because uh, Mario, uh, I think that he did well in the last. Maybe not in the last three, four months because he, he had a big problem, injury. But he did well uh, because with Mario, Mario helped the team to to win uh, Premier League, to win uh, FA Cup. Uh, and we are we are sad for this, but this is a football. I, be, I believe in him, and I believe that for him to come back in Italy uh, after two years and half in England uh, could be important. He has everything, depending on him always. He, uh, he has quality, it's important that uh, he can understand this. But I think that uh, play for me is very important. I say to you a lot of times, for me, it was the same if Mario was here, uh, also with all his mistake, uh, for me it was an important player. In the debut game for his new club, Mario knew that there were a lot of eyes on him. Fans and critics were wondering which Mario Balotelli AC Milan just acquired. The goal-scoring talent or the troublesome athlete? Balotelli had finally joined his childhood dream club, so he wanted it to be a success story. In his first game against Udinese, Mario immediately scored a brace, showing everyone that he joined Milan to dominate. He kept scoring throughout the season for Milan and had 12 goals in 13 games at the end of it. 
He helped Milan and had a big positive impact within the team, despite only joining them midway through the season. Balotelli's goals and performances were so important for Milan, who were struggling to qualify for their Europa League beforehand, that he helped them qualify for the Champions League with his final goal of the season. The next season Mario kept on delivering and scoring brilliant goals, but he also started getting inconsistent, having a bad match where he wouldn't be noticeable on the pitch at all. Nevertheless, Mario ended up scoring 19 goals with 6 assists in 44 games for the club across all competitions in that season. He also collected 1 red and 18 yellow cards, but Milan wasn't functioning very well, going on several losing streaks and ending the season in 8th place. With the last season going horribly wrong, Mario decided that it was time to move clubs once again. He joined Liverpool in the 2014-2015 season for a fee of 20 million euros and was meant to be the man to replace top goalscorer Luis Suarez, who had just left the club for Barcelona. There were once more lots of people who doubted his transfer and who simply couldn't see Mario fitting into Brandon Rogers' Liverpool style of play. Unfortunately, this turned out to be true. The downfall of his career began at Liverpool, and Mario has since said in plenty of interviews that joining Liverpool was the worst decision he ever made and the biggest mistake of his life. Mario's time in Liverpool was truly awful and a turning point in his career. He couldn't adapt, couldn't score, and had a bad relationship with the manager, Brandon Rodgers, and some of his co-players. By Christmas of his first season at Anfield, Mario hadn't yet scored a single goal for Liverpool. His signing was getting bad reviews from critics all over the world, some even calling him the worst signing in Premier League history. During the second half of the season, things didn't get better, with Mario getting benched and left out of the squad more frequently ending his first and last season at Liverpool with 4 goals and 7 yellow cards on his stat sheet through 28 appearances. The year went so badly for Balotelli that Liverpool loaned him back to AC Milan the following season, where he picked up an injury in one of his first games back. He never really found his way back to full recovery during that season. Mario only scored 3 goals and assisted once in 23 appearances. Combined with 6 yellow cards, those weren't stats Milan expected from their striker. By the end of the season, his loan deal had expired and he had to return to Anfield where Jurgen Klopp had just taken over as head coach. Unfortunately, there was no space for him under the German coach, so on deadline day Mario was released from his Liverpool contract, signing on a free transfer for league inside Nice. Despite his career suffering and going downhill for the past two seasons, Mario managed to pick himself up at Nice again, proving the world that he still isn't done scoring spectacular goals. Critics called this move the end for Mario, but he proved everyone wrong by playing a spectacular season during his first year in the French First League. In his debut game against Marseille, Balotelli scored twice to secure the victory and a great start to the season. He ended his first season in Nice with 16 goals and 1 assist, but he still couldn't find a way of staying out of trouble. In his first 10 games for the club, Mario had collected 8 yellow and 2 red cards, and by the end of the season he had a total of 12 yellow and 3 red cards. But some of his bust-ups were caused by the fans and some players racially abusing and mocking him. He had to battle racism once more, and there were games where he got bad, up to the point of the opposition fans screaming monkey noises and throwing bananas on the pitch whenever he'd have possession of the ball. But Mario kept going, not giving in to the racists and their insults. His second season at Nice was arguably one of the best seasons in his career. Mario seemed to have found his goal-scoring form and how to use his potential, scoring a total of 26 goals and assisting another two in that season, while also seeing 1 red and 16 yellow cards. But he was one of the few consistent players in that season, with Nice struggling to keep their form up, ending on 8th place in the league. The lack of consistency and performance by the team led to Mario's desire to once more move on and change clubs, this time having Marseille as the desired team. But the deal didn't go through in summer and Mario was forced to stay in Nice. That season felt like he was put back in Liverpool. Mario had no desire to play for them anymore, arriving late or even completely missing training sessions, 
fighting with the manager and his teammates, and by January, Balotelli hadn't scored a single league goal for the club, with his form and attitude hitting rock bottom once again. This led to Nice releasing Balotelli from his contract, so that he could join Marseille in a free transfer during the January transfer window. Instantly, Mario made a difference on the pitch for his new club, scoring 7 goals in his first 9 appearances. Clearly, he hadn't been in a bad form during the first half of the season. He just didn't have the energy or motivation to play for Nice and was disappointed about his transfer to Marseille not going through. After playing a good second half of the season, everyone assumed that he would renew his contract and stay for another season or two in Marseille, but things took an unexpected turn. With Brescia Calcio making it into Italy's first league, Mario had changed his plans about staying in the French league and desired a comeback in his home country's first league, the Serie A, ending his last season in the league earn with 8 goals, 1 assist, 1 red and 11 yellow cards. The main reason for Mario choosing Brescia as his next football club was a personal one. His parents were local supporters of the club and him joining and wanting to help the team in their season back in the Serie A meant a lot to him and his family. But it ended up being a transfer, which he regretted. Brescia ended the season on 19th place and got relegated back to the Serie B after only one season back in Italy's highest division, with Mario not finding his form and struggling along his team throughout the whole season. He still scored some great goals and had a couple of good performances on the pitch, but it simply wasn't enough to help save Brescia from relegation. He ended the season with 19 appearances, 5 goals, 7 yellow cards and 1 red one. Once more, Balotelli was racially abused by the fans and in one game he had enough of it. After what happened to in the last game, uh, I felt a little bit uh, alone when I was home and I always said that if it happened in the stadium, I just do like if I, nobody say nothing and I don't care. But this time, I think I changed my mind a little bit. And if it's going to happen one more time, I'm going to leave the pitch because it's so stupid. Support your team, support your players and don't really be bothered about other other players. Yes, it's normal. Maybe sometimes you say... F there are insults oh, to players. You can yeah. say something about, against other players, okay, it's normal, but not racist things. After the failed season with Brescia, Balotelli joined Berlusconi's second division team AC Monza. His time with the club wasn't anything extraordinary or special, with him scoring six goals and assisting another one, while seeing four yellow cards in 14 games played. It seemed as if Mario had accepted the end of his career and just wanted to have a bit more fun in Italy before retiring from football. But something inside him must have changed during his time with Monza. He seemed to have found his passion and joy for the beautiful game again, and by the next season in 2021-2022, Mario had joined Adama Demirspor, who were just promoted to the Turkish First League and wanted to have an immediate impact in the Super League. So far, in his first 20 appearances for the club, Mario has managed to score 9 goals and assist 3 times, helping his team to 4th place in the league, right above Fenerbahce and Besiktas. He had a couple of bust-ups and Balotelli moments here and there, and he has already seen 7 yellow cards, but it was nothing major, with his performance on the pitch currently overshadowing those moments. As I am making this video, Mario Balotelli has been officially called back up to play for the Italian national team. The winners of the last Euros hope for him to keep his good performance up and once again deliver for the national team. The coach who noticed Balotelli's recent performances and who decided to give him another chance to represent his country at the age of 31 is no other than Roberto Mancini. It seems as if Mancini has missed Balotelli, with whom he always had a special father-son connection. Hopefully he can once more get the most out of Balotelli and that the two can have a successful time collecting wins for Italy. After all, we all know how good Mario Balotelli can be when he really tries his best and something tells me that for the final time he will give his all for the national team. Unfortunately, Balotelli is one of many players who had to deal with fighting against racial abuse, racist slurs and chants from fans and other players throughout his whole career. 
Regardless of how his career went, and if you do or do not like the football player he has shown to be over the years, Mario deserves all the credit and appreciation for staying strong while dealing with discrimination and racism, never giving in and always fighting the abuse. No man should ever be insulted, embarrassed or looked down on because of the color of his skin and it is sad to see that racism still is such a big issue in the world and that players like Balotelli must suffer and fight against this injustice. Love him or hate him, Mario Balotelli proved to the world that he had immense potential to become one of the greatest strikers of all time. His skills and abilities were remarkable, but unfortunately his ego combined with a poor mindset and bad work ethic kept him down and away from unlocking his true greatness, leading to his career's inevitable downfall. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment down below which Balotelli story is your favorite. Pictures of what happened on the training round yesterday morning. What have we got to say about what happened between Mario and Mario? Box. <laughs> it was boxing, it was part of the training. It was boxing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing special. This uh, happens in, in every squad sometimes when you play a little match. It can happen. He wore a t shirt saying, Why always me? Do you think yeah. why always Mario? I asked him yesterday, Why are always you? And his answer was? No, because they, they didn't pass the ball to me. But it was a really stupid thing. For nothing. But after three minutes, after the dressing room was finished. Are, are these sort of things that go on in training grounds a lot? We were told it, it happens a lot. It's just that you have lots of photographers watching what you do. Yeah, but the other, other side, there are a screen and the photographers can uh, do a photo. But it's a normal. Manchester City are still alive here. Balotelli, Aguero! I swear you'll never see anything like this ever again. So watch it.